you know, beginnings of this uh, wonderful experience and uh, leave you with our audience uh, at the beginning of the great adventure. So, hello everyone. Um, we will start with um, speaking about uh, finding the subject, uh, how we, us as a documentary filmmakers, first of all, find the subjects of the films, because this is a, this is a difficult thing, because in documentary, it's, you don't imagine your own subject. You must find it, and not always you can find a, a good subject. So it's important to recognize it when it comes to you. So how was the experience with us um, coming from different backgrounds? Uh, the, the first uh, project we worked together on was Lake of Apples. And this is a story about uh, a polluted lake in Macedonia uh, that everyone uh, feels sorry about because it's polluted, but nobody understands that it's people it's the local people who um, could destroy it without even realizing what they did. And this was a very interesting, uh, vicious circle that we tried to show in the, in the film. So uh, maybe you can see more about finding this subject. Yeah, because that's because we are coming from different backgrounds. Uh, my background is, is more on the nature, working with uh, nature conservation uh, programs and initiatives, environmentally related. So we had access to, 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 to projects like this and to for access to finances, although they're small, but uh, obviously enough for what we did. And um, so, so we finished that first uh, together movie in in one year, but uh, because uh, previously we were working on another project where we had to do the research during the same year, we came very soon to to Honeyland, to Atija. Uh, it, it was an interesting uh, process how we discovered this woman uh, because uh, we, we were assigned to do a short documentary about the area, but uh, we, we had freedom to choose the person or the subject or what, what the film will, about, will be about. So the first thing we discovered were the beehives in the rocks. And they were very interesting uh, because they were everywhere on all the hills. So we started asking the locals around, uh, what are these behind, uh, what are these holes, who they belong to, is it made from a human or not? And uh, this is how the local people brought us to Atija's family. Uh, all her family uh, is uh, wild beekeepers and they, they're working with bees, but uh, when we met each member one by one, uh, we realized that uh, most of them, most of her brothers, are living a very regular life. In, a, in Not in the area, but in the villages that are yeah. neighboring the area, not in this specific area. We will talk about it later. Yes, they're, mm -hmm. they're living in a village that has electricity, has school, has... Uh, Thousand course. inhabitants, which is... Yeah. But uh, when we met Atija, uh, living in this small cottage without electricity in the middle of the rocks with her mother, who is unable to leave the cottage because she's like an invalid, she cannot walk. Uh, immediately we recognize that she is living the life of a bee, of a worker bee who always goes out to find the honey and, come, and comes back to her mother, the queen bee, who cannot exit and this for us was such an interesting idea and we realized that if we want to tell this story about the wild bee hunters it must be told from this person this is the right person this is how we started working with her yeah. um, i mean the environmental issue is very strong in your film in many ways you know it's not like sometimes some people you know downsize the uh, 
environmental idea to like the wild nature, you know. In fact, it's also uh, the uh, harmony of, uh, you know, men and um, human beings and nature all together. So we saw the social environmentalist, uh, you know, um, aspect of the story very strongly in your film. I think that also touched very much uh, people uh, in, in a country like the US, for example. Uh, who has a great nature, but have almost uh, no, uh, you know, direct contact with it in in, in the way uh, Hatice tries to survive. Okay. C can I ask uh, about f for the technician first, because uh, the the voice of the translator is yeah. uh, higher than yours. We we understand your question, but it is difficult to follow to follow. Uh, yeah. Is there any chance to uh, for yeah. us just to, to listening just you? Yes. How we can turn off the yes. mm. normally I think that there's a um in the zoom there should be an option. I've been trying to find it. <laughs> now it is better. Now your voice is I think slightly I will speak up, maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I will speak yeah. up, and um, we'll try I'll try, try to. to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, it was it like the social environmentalist aspect of your film, which touched uh, the you know uh, countries which are much more uh, advanced, sure. you know, technologically sure, 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 and economically. Then they see uh, a form of life which depends sure. on the harmony of nature and human beings. That's that's one of the point uh, uh, we we succeed to to reach very very strongly that uh, environmental aspect. But uh, there actually there are two environmental aspects. Uh, the one we talk about in during the first half year of presenting the film was about um, it, it is talked already about that uh, about uh, equal sharing of. of of uh, what we what we take for, for, for benefits from the nature, right? And it is very simple. Uh, but uh, what is more important is that uh, we shown in that interaction between the characters inside, especially with the buyer and Hussein's reaction uh, on his offer. We saw how exactly the the the, the the capitalism works. Capitalism is very simple word, but I don't have better. Uh, uh, when, when uh, in the community of of three people, three and a half people there, right, without kids, uh, when there is a, a balance based on agreement, right, between between uh, uh, the, the the host and the newcomer, and uh, they're establishing a certain balance, and uh, we, we saw very clearly what happens when somebody came and uh, offer more, offer more money or more resources. Then the balance is it's changing. Is changing, and it is very very simple way of showing how everything works mm -hmm. works. So that's probably the the. Uh, environmental, social environmental aspect, which is more important than that. Mm -hmm. Again, there is another third point, uh, because that area was forest long time ago. Mm -hmm. And it was completely overused. Forest were, was cut during the centuries, first from Romans, then from Ottomans, then from who left here. Right, uh -huh. and uh, uh, the soil was eroded. The the, the river <clears throat> also because there are uh, accumulations in the upper stream. The river the river is much smaller. And then we see the only inhabitant who left there who is forced to turn to these simple principles of sustainability. Something like that. Yeah. 
No, because it um, unfortunately uh, just was a big challenge for you because already you are in a place without electricity, you know, far away from the city. And then, uh, you know, you have the physical conditions uh, and you're working with a small team all the time. Uh, this when change, seasons change, you know, it was difficult already. Uh, but you overcame with it with your great skills. Uh, but then uh, overcoming this aspect, uh, once you shot the film, uh, trying to do, uh, you know, to bring out uh, what really mattered uh, during the editing, that is, I think, a real challenge. And then, uh, you know, okay, I admire so much uh, the cinematography and everything, but then comes the editing, which is, uh, I think, brilliant. We, so would you tell us the story that, I mean, your choice uh, of all these, uh, you know, uh, difficult physical conditions turning into a very uh, smooth uh, form of film language? Well, uh, the story is interesting to, to <laughs> tell from uh, how was in you're our... You're muted, you're muted. Uh, we, you're not muted. Can you hear us? Yeah. You, yes, you yes. can hear us, okay. okay. So, uh, it's interesting to say the shooting story from our experience, from our eyes, how we lived there, how we got there, and then how we deal with the protagonist during the shooting. This is the first part of, of making Honeyland. So um, for us, first, it's important to say that every documentarist must love their job because if they don't, they cannot do it. The persistence to, to wait for something to actually happen in real life, then you cannot do this, this work because this is, uh, this is the difficult part like you're doing something, you need to keep believing in something that you don't know if it pays off. You don't know if, if it's worthy. So for us, it was... Uh, it will happen. Yes. For us, it was important that all the team, all these four people who were there, they were <clears throat> ready for this kind of challenge. They like this kind of lifestyle. They enjoy this kind of adventure. And uh, we were all... We all enjoyed this to begin with. So for us, for example, this is very funny, but for us, the conditions where we were sleeping, we were sleeping in tents, we were eating uh, food from cans, or we were cooking something on Atija's uh, backyard fire. Uh, we, we were going in a vehicle uh, across, like, no, there, there's no road. So it's like across hills, just in the middle of, of the forest basically to get there and for us nothing of this was difficult even though uh, everyone reacts like that for us it was more difficult to stay in the hotels for the oscar campaign for <laughs> example because this is not the people we are sure. so yeah <clears throat> this we complain more at that time <laughs> than in the shooting time but uh Yes, I mean, uh, the, it was sometimes, you know, usually it, it was very hot because most of the film is shot during the summer uh, because the children are not going to school in the summer so we could spend more time. There is no tree, there is no shadow in the area, so it's exhaustingly hot. And, for example, there is many fleas, many bugs that eat our skin. Or This is the basic conditions, but uh, we saw that these people... They, during second year, there was no water there. Yeah, there's no water. No running water for nothing, for washing. We, we took uh, water with us all the time. And we took food with us and we took food for them, for the people, for Atija and the family. And uh, the thing is that when we watch these people, how they live, we realize that if we don't experience how they live, we will never be able to understand them and make the film how they are doing it, how, how they are seeing the life around them. So that's how we decided to spend 100 shooting days in this village. Uh, the decision to shoot in winter also was one of the most negotiable decisions because uh, by the time the summer was, was done, we already had a lot of material and we thought, wait a minute, if we are going in the winter, first of all, 
this is very difficult this how first year. how we will do this yeah first year and then we are saying maybe this is not necessary for the film i mean the it's it's usually it's a it's a danger in documentary filmmaking when somebody starts shooting and shooting and shooting and then the film loses track they're going in one way the other way the third way and it just keeps um uh, you keep shooting and you have so much material, you don't know what to do with it. It's very difficult in editing. But again, we decided to go in the winter to see what's there. Maybe there's nothing, maybe there is something. And then it turned out that in the winter, there were the most poetic and the most beautiful scenes in the film. And then there is the ending of the film, which is in winter, which is the most important scene because what it shows, it shows that Atije, uh, it paid off what she was fighting for. She found the honey that fed her in the winter. So it paid off that she saved the bees because they made more honey and then there was for all of them in the winter. So it's always important to have the um, uh, curiosity to check more and more if, if you can add more to, to your story. And uh, so this is about the shooting part. Also, maybe Yuba can mention about our problems with the protagonist, how we deal with them during the shooting. This is very interesting aspect. Yeah, the getting getting close to your protagonist during period of several years is complicated thing. It is life matter. It is a human relation, first of all, right? First of all, you're, when, when we're coming in the village, you're not coming with, with, uh, with cameras. We are coming, hey, how are you? Let's eat, let's uh, have a coffee or whatever. Right? Shooting came after that. And uh, keeping that uh, first, uh, 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 reaching that trust is different. It was different with Atija. It was like this from the first moment. And it was very much different with the family uh, who appear months uh, later. And we get in, uh, in first contact with them half year later. Something like that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, experience of, 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 uh, of building a personal relation with with uh, protagonists was different from uh, each of us from me for, for me for tamara and from Femi and for uh, summit um uh, i can say uh, about i, I will skip atija i will because uh, much much has been talked about her uh i will talk about uh, getting close with the with the family for me my experience um there was a Second year, yes, uh, and uh, because we had a small Terran vehicle and uh, we were coming there uh, two by two. First, usually, pay me and me probably uh, with car and uh, equipment and first portion of uh, food. food. And then uh, he will, one of us will go back uh, to take uh, the rest, of the, the rest of the crew uh, from the nearest uh, reachable village. And once uh, Femi uh, left me in the village with the cameras, no food, just with the cameras, and uh, he, he went back for them. And suddenly a serious storm came. Yeah, and it and, was so uh, hot, it was sunny, and all of a sudden, just the summer storm happened, mm -hmm. like in the moment. And when there is a uh, heavy rain, you cannot you cannot drive there with nothing. Yeah, it's all mud. And yeah. they they went back yeah, three we... of them to Skopje, and they stayed there for five days. We were just sitting in the <laughs> middle of the village, and we were thinking, what to do? I mean, we have no way to go there. We said, but Lubo is there. Should we leave him? We said he'll be fine. He will be with the family and with Atija. <laughs> so we came back uh, to Skopje. <laughs> so, so, so when I stayed there, uh, probably one, some of the, some of the most, most of them are not in the film, but uh, explosive uh, interactions between them happen. For example, the scene with the uh, when Atija is on the rope. 
on the yeah, rope. Yes. She's playing. Yeah. Okay. It is filmed then. The children. Okay. Yes. So so probably uh, uh, keeping uh, not keeping but uh, uh, letting yourself uh, to be the same on as close as, as, as possible with your protagonist bring you closer to him, probably. And I think you have um, uh, this uh, incredible uh, ethical balance between uh, the family and Hatija. So, okay, Hatija is a protagonist, but they are not the antagonist. I mean, after all, they have a lawsuit with her, I mean, uh, a disagreement, but they are also simply trying to survive, you know, in the only way they know, you know. Uh, you they are helpless, this. not educated, and this is the way they know how to live. So you don't interfere, which is very, uh, you know, interesting, because you get carried away. You see that, uh, I mean, especially with the interviews afterwards, Hatice considers you like family, that uh, what she said to the Korean uh, journalist that they did not find me, I found them. Yeah. It was like she was really looking uh, for some people who's going to share her loneliness. Uh, I mean, she's uh, with her mother Nazife, and then she needs someone really to see her. And then you saw her, which is so touching, but you didn't interfere. Uh, although you were like a family, I mean, how did you decide with it? You didn't get carried away with your emotions uh, in such a long period of time. Well, first of all, thank you for saying this because you're one of the rare people that uh, can say this about the Sam's family, because usually everyone just immediately judges them as being antagonist and what they're doing is wrong. But every time that we had a Q&A, especially in USA, uh, when somebody mentioned this, we said, uh, please take a look at them as a mirror to yourself, because all of us are much closer to what Hussein is doing to nature and is doing for his family. And none of us is close to Atija, really. The way we live our lives is a consumeristic society. <laughs> and everyone wants to believe that they are closer to Atija, but... But it's better to see in the mirror and see the truth. Wait, what are you maybe doing wrong in your life? And what, may, what is making you closer to the capitalistic point of view? Uh, because it's, it's obviously all over the world. It's small societies left that live like Atija, unfortunately. But um, definitely, yes, Hussein uh, and his family, they're living the, the life that they know how to live. And they're doing the best they can, obviously, of course. But uh, for us, this was the most important thing, not to change their life, but to show it as it is. And there are many scenes that are dangerous, like, for example, when the girl is drowning, that none of us could react because uh, this harsh life uh, will stay there once we leave back in our city. And these kids will have the same situations again and again, and they must learn. So if we catch one situation on camera, there are hundreds more happening behind the camera. So yeah. it's important to understand that we are not uh, like um, uh, social workers. We are not there to change their life. We are there to witness their life and to show it to the world, to make a um, statement with this, to make a... Um, something that that will uh, give a message to a louder uh, to to uh, sorry to a broader uh, mass of people mm -hmm. so it's it's not important to change the lives of 10 people living in this abandoned place it's important to raise to awareness show, to show their message yes although we change their lives mm -hmm. yes, with our of presence with, with everything well, I mean, this is, I think, inevitable, uh, but uh, not in a way uh, which, you know, harms them. I mean, at least it's a night of uh, enlightenment for us and for them as well. I mean, uh, yes. so I think... I don't uh, know what life brings, so... 
I see. But it's, uh, it's, it's the fact that they changed our life and we changed their life. It's for sure. Yeah. And they, they changed our life in a, in a very good way because thanks to the shooting of four years, uh, after everything that followed after this shooting, all the success of the film, um, all the events that happened, we, we were able to accept them on a very modest way. Uh, because we always had the example of Atije and the Sam's family about uh, humidity, about uh, acceptance. You know, it's they affected us in a really nice way. They showed us that people can be happy with so much little and they can find meaning in everything. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'm also checking if there are any questions, uh, but I think maybe uh, there are a lot more things they should tell us about uh, the, you know, behind the scenes of this uh, film. Sure. Sure. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, it, we, we, we talked... Uh, we, we, we've talked a lot about uh, on, on, on our Q&A and, and uh, interviews about uh, the amount of material <clears throat> we had during uh, we, we collect during those three years uh, of shooting. Uh, it's very interesting how how we how we build the story uh, during the shooting and uh, during the during the editing. After that, uh, it was from the beginning of the of the filming during the first first uh, weeks of shooting. We, we we filmed that scene where Atij is, uh, is talking to the beast. Uh, call for me, call for you. So it was clear that that we'll use that uh, as as a main message because it is strong. It, it have very 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 big sense uh, in what we, we we wanted to show. Uh, but but during the years when when uh, the, the the relations started to get uh, uh, more active in the in interactions between the children and Atija children and then the Hussein and, and their mother and Lutvi and between all of them. And uh, uh, we started shooting lots of uh, lines. So, so uh, basically, uh, for example, Muzo, the, the kid uh, who is who is getting close with Atija, is uh, one we choose. We know that he will be the, the main uh, children character, but uh, we also had uh, very deep lines with, with the little girl, with Gamze, and uh, with one more uh, of the boys. So um, for me personally, during the shooting, uh, the line with the little girl were, was stronger. But mm -hmm. In the editing, we, we didn't use it because we put Muzo first, and it worked, and mm -hmm. uh, it was it was clear that maybe, yeah. maybe Tamara will will add more about the. Well, uh, be before we enter in the editing process, because there is a lot to speak about this process. Uh -huh. Maybe we should uh, say other interesting facts about the shooting itself. Mm -hmm. and how we brought the decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for example, uh, how we decided uh, to stop the shooting, this is also very important, to stop the shooting after four years. Um, oh. we, it's, what's important about this film is that uh, I, I always try to say this uh, to workshops, uh, especially it's a message for filmmakers, um, because uh, always filmmakers tend to start from some huge uh, idea, very ambitious idea, and then to try to find the ways how to make this huge idea. But for countries in the, especially I would say in the Eastern Europe, this is very difficult. This is more a Western approach on filmmaking, mm -hmm. where you can find financing easily or just the, the way is different. For us, when we start with a big idea, we always get stuck somewhere in the process how to finish financing it or 
how to sell this idea or uh, it, it, the process is a lot longer and more difficult. In Honeyland, the, uh, it started from the other way around. So it started from one small seed that was just naturally growing and growing. So we never mm -hmm. had such a huge idea, such, such an ambitious idea to make an Oscar nominated film. We started with just a simple idea to make a short documentary about nature conservation. So let's see what this will be, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So when we found Atija, again, we didn't think about a long film because uh, we said she's a very interesting uh, character. This is a very interesting topic, but again, it's good for a short documentary. So we started thinking in this way. Let's make a short documentary about Atije and her mother and the life with her mother. Family wasn't... Family you know, still didn't, know didn't family. exist. Yes. And then we just keep shooting for six months, only with Atije, her mother, her work with the bees. Then yeah. when after six months, the family showed up, we thought of a really important decision. Because uh, first they came in the village, but we didn't pay attention to them. But then we realized that Atija has some older issues with them, that they're coming and going every season. And we start asking more questions to her. She said, yes, we have more problems. It's about the bees, it's about the cows, it's about this and that. So it's an old conflict. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, we had a meeting with a crew meeting and brought a decision to start shooting this other family and to see if we can work with them, which it was very difficult because they, they were not as open as Atije. They didn't want to be shot. They, it took just a very a longer time to approach them. So um, Atije helped us in this. Uh, she was calling the children to play with them, to eat together, to, to sing songs. And this is how we made the first footage with the children. And once we made the first footage, they accept us as a game. You know, they, they wanted to show off in front of the camera. They wanted to, to act foolish, you know, to do something interesting. So this is how, step by step, we entered the family and started shooting and gained their trust. And then when we started shooting with them, we realized this has a potential to be a feature length mm -hmm. film. So from that moment on, we were shooting for one more year before we do the first assembly to send it to Sarajevo Film Festival. And this was the first test. So again, we didn't have a high ambition by this moment. We just tried to test the film to see if this has a potential, if audience would like this. And it turned out we won the main TRT award there which gave us the most courage to continue the shooting. This was for us the main point. Okay, we must keep shooting. And from that moment, we keep shooting for two more years to catch, or one, depending on, but to catch every season, to catch the coming and the going of the nomads. So the basically the film naturally grew from a short film to a feature length film. And it's always important for an author to hear what, what the audience is saying to them, to, to just test the film more, not to uh, put all the effort into the final product, but just to test it along the way. This is very important, to know if they're going in the right direction or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is, is it the idea? Is it the character what is worthy? It is, uh, is it uh, the, the, the visual? Uh, yes. It turned out that we have everything here. To, to know the strengths of your film and to know which direction is the best to go. In a documentary, of course, in a feature. And, you, you and can, you we, 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 I remember we select, it was 2016 or 17, like 17 maybe. We select uh, uh, um, raw shots from mm -hmm. three, uh, three separate... Uh, uh shooting uh sessions one was uh atije with the bees one was atije with uh, with the bees and her mother uh -huh. one was just cows and kids and family just rodeo and one was winter something uh -huh. 
I see. Mm-hmm. But but no story, no nothing. Yeah. yeah. It was just scenes, a <laughs> couple mm-hmm. of scenes. So if you have something to add about the shooting uh, process, you will. Well, maybe maybe someone somebody will 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 ask uh, about that. If not, we will continue with the but, editing process. Yes, but we can we can always continue. Uh, you know, uh, with uh, okay, because the shooting is like you have uh, Faye Dawood and Sami Luma. Uh, the two uh, cameramen uh, who were like <laughs> on the edge of uh, the hills and uh, you know it's Depending. interesting Depending. and also sometimes they they just disappeared right uh, and and Hatije was uh, living like very intimate moments uh, with her mother and then in that uh, little uh, house let's say little room in fact with very it's little light house. in it. It's just a, the, the little house is just one room. Yeah, one room. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, everything has uh, natural lighting. That, yeah. That's also a big challenge because you don't have electricity there. You don't have the you know ability for additional lighting, which would make everything look better in a technological no, no, no. way. But it still uh, has a warmer feeling. Uh, which comes uh, from, uh, you know, uh, reflecting the reality uh, of the uh, situation, I think. It, it's, it's more effective, at least to me. Yeah, uh, the, 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 you know, we, when we find that, we, we made, who know, many photos of, of, uh, of uh, her uh, and, and her mother in that room and, and mm-hmm. it was clear that that light is perfect. Yes, mm-hmm. perfect. there's no need like, for no anything No need else. for anything there. During yeah. the day and during the night, during the winter, during the summer, it is perfect. Yeah, it's also important to mention that uh, being two directors and two cinematographers really helped in the process because uh, we were splitting on two teams very often. And one was working with one family, the other with the other family. So we had time to cover everything. This That's very practical, but depending. still it's a no. very small team. It's still yeah. very small team. And because uh, it, it is a long period of time, many days there, it was it was randomly by, by feeling who will go with who, where, who will well, there is one important question, though. Um, Hatice and Nazife are speaking in Turkish among them. And uh, as far as I know, none of you understood Turkish. Neither Femi nor Samir Femi, nor you. Femi. Only Femi. Femi, he did understand. Oh, yeah. oh, good. At least. But when Femi wasn't there, then, uh, I mean, also the Sam family, I mean, Hussein's family, and everyone is speaking in Turkish among them. So maybe they felt freer to continue their uh, everyday conversations because they don't understand, so they don't care about your existence. It, it was an adva- a disadvantage turned into an advantage, I think. Exactly, yes. Sure. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> but uh, what, what were you feeling at the time? Like, um, how did you manage during the editing? Uh, did you have a, a translator all the time to help you with that? No, no actually, no. this is the most interesting process for us uh, because uh, in the shooting, it was a difficult decision to to say if uh, we should work with them in Macedonian or in Turkish. Finally, we decided to let them speak in Turkish because it's their mother language, it's closer mm-hmm. to them and we will adapt. So most, most of the time uh, we knew what is going on but we didn't understand anything of their conversation, obviously. Mm-hmm. And when we brought all this material in editing, this is where the real task started. Because uh, we thought if we give this to a translator, we will not be able to start editing in the next maybe six months, which is too much. Hmm. Then uh, we said, okay, but if we start editing, how we can do this? How is it possible? So every day for a week, we are going in the studio, having the conversation, Uh, dilemmas, how are we doing this, let's find a way, let's find a strategy, how to deal with this material. 
And then eventually we realized that uh, we should do uh, mute editing to start with, which means that uh, we are setting a basic storyline on the program. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. let's say we're, we have 10 minutes introduction, 10 minutes inciting incident, just like in a fiction film. Yeah. And let's fill these empty gaps with the material we have and let's make this just by visual appearance. So if we understand what visually is going on, then the audience will understand. So this is how we started. We found, we made a selection first of all the materials about introduction. How we, we made a table of questions, like 10 questions. Who is Atije? What, uh, is, she what is she doing? Where, Where does she, she live? live? How do we know as audience all these questions? How do we answer all these questions visually? How do we know the village is abandoned? How do we know she doesn't have a family, only her mother? Uh, all, these, all these things. How do we know that this is wild bees? Um, all of this just in 10 minutes and finding the right shots that show this. Then we go to inside an incident, which is the arrival of the family. And you can, you can uh, see when you're scrolling the timeline, this is actually what we wanted to share. We can share this after, after this uh, speech. Uh, it's exactly on the minutes, like you have 10, 13 minutes introduction, then you have this and that and just how it's going. So. Then we said, okay, for the inciting incident, uh, the family is definitely the inciting incident of this film, they, their arrival in the village. But how do we show that, are they coming for the first time? Is, does Atija know them or she doesn't know them? Um, are, they, uh, nom are they nomadic family? Are they uh, Seasonal. seasonals? Mm -hmm. So we just started uh, thinking of ways how to shoot and how to edit their arrival. So I will uh, play now, uh, just give me a couple of seconds. Sure. I will play the link from the film to show you some of these visual decisions we made in editing. Perfect. While you do that, I'm going to read a few comments coming from our audiences. I mean, they're uh, really uh, brilliant. Like uh, one of them says, uh, Honeyland was a documentary that made me want to sit and take a few minutes after it finished to soak in the emotions it created. Few films would have such an impact. Thank you for that. Another one is, um, Honeyland was such a well-made documentary that at some point I was thinking to myself if it was a scripted film, so, so real, bravo to everyone. And another one, one of my favorite documentaries I've ever seen. Thank you. Hatija's resilience, her love for the bees and nature itself were truly inspiring and moving. So instead of questions, I have, uh, <laughs> you know, wonderful comments. Thank you for this. It's really beautiful. Yeah. These comments. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, so now I will do a share screen with the audience. Just give me. Mm -hmm. Share screen. Okay. Uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So if it's possible to. Oh, uh, so let's ask our technician uh, to make you able because you had mentioned this, right? Uh -huh. So while our technician uh, and, and I hope they hear us and I'm trying to text them also. 
Okay, now it's okay. Ah, uh, it's okay. Great. Can you see? Yes. Okay. So. Let me just read this. For example, okay, the introduction of where she lives. And mm -hmm. this is the only drone shot that we have used. Uh, we had more drone shots, which were really nice, but we decided not to, not to use them because it didn't work with the feeling of the film. It, the drone gave a feeling like it's a fiction film. But mm -hmm. this shot we must use because that's the only way we see the area completely. And for example, uh, I will scroll to the arrival of the, um, of the newcomers. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, I'll just mention this. Uh, this scene, wait, um, this scene is the opening scene of the relationship between Atije and her mother. Mm -hmm. And they're arguing about something. They're arguing about her mother doesn't want to stretch her legs yeah so this was uh this was put here in the very end when we got all the translation uh, -huh. uh and it was our last and most difficult decision uh what to be the opening scene of adige and her mother we had many 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 other uh scenes and most of them are when they're having a nice relationship a uh, sweet relationship, but mm -hmm. we decided in the end to put this one because it shows the truth. It shows the harsh truth that they are arguing, but they still love each other and they still take care of each other. And it's like in every family. Sure. If you show just the sweetness and how nice, this is not reality. Every family has arguments, has harsh moments, and but they still love each other. So this is how we choose this opening scene for Atija and her mother. Yeah. A brilliant uh, choice. I then, think. Okay, I will go to the newcomers, which is we will go back to the market later. Lugo will say mm -hmm. something about showing the diversity here. Where do I go? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see? Yes. On the 14th minute, we show the arrival of the newcomers. And uh, we choose this shot that was the most visual. Uh, we had other situations when they, when they arrived, they came to Atija to take a coffee, to say hi. Uh, but then we realized that this is not good because people who don't understand the language, they will not understand what they're speaking. And if you just show the arrival with the truck, it's very visual. It's like almost like a animation, you know, it's so mm -hmm. simple. Anyone can understand it. And then... Um, Basically, while doing all of this, you can imagine that this was done without sound. We uh, turn off the sound completely during editing. And for example, uh, I will show you just one more uh, solution that was done during editing. Uh, when, when we just see them arriving, mm -hmm. And Atiji is observing them through the through the wall, like right here. She's observing them. Yes, yes, I remember clearly. Yeah. She turns her head now. You can just see. And she says they're Turkish. So this is one of the very very rare sound. Um, how to say, nah. yeah, nah, uh, so it's not, she doesn't say this in real time. This is one of the rare, there is two in the film. 
that's done in editing. And this is a sentence she said in a previous uh, scene, but we used it here to make sure that audience would understand that Atija doesn't know these people. She just listened to them and realized they're Turkish. And it's mm -hmm. a decision which is... So basically uh, we have two sound editings like this, just to make sure that uh, and, and this is this kind of solutions are giving the feeling it's a fiction film, which is not. <laughs> the second one. Uh, the second one is also a really interesting decision. It's uh, it's connected with the death of Atija's mother. Uh, it's. Let me just find it. Uh, we will go back and forth in the film, according to to what we are seeing. So. The death of the mother uh, is something is a scene that was shot by Dubo and Femi because mm -hmm. they were in Skopje at the moment when Atija called, mm -hmm. and they immediately went there. And uh, however, uh, they had Dubo will speak more about this. They had a huge pressure from the relatives, so they only managed to catch inside the hut where Atija was sitting. Mm -hmm. But then, during the editing, uh, what we did, so this is the last scene where you see Atija's mother alive. And uh, if you notice, she's using one of the most important lines, for me, at, at least, mm -hmm. in the film. Uh, Atija says, will spring come? And the mother is saying, is there spring? Too many winters has passed. And and this sentence is not only uh, direct, but it's metaphorical. She's referring to the world. Is there spring? Mm -hmm. Will there be new springs or not? Are we destroying the spring? Uh, and after this, there is the scene with the radio where Atija is trying to give more hope to her mother, to, mm -hmm. to raise hope in this dead place. But uh, when she turned on the radio, this is the, the scene. She's mm -hmm. calling her mom to hear. That right there, when she's calling mom, mom, it's also the second sound editing. On the white shot. On the white shot. To show the emptiness of the place and uh, and the hopelessness of Atija. So these are the two uh, interventions that we made in the film that give the feeling of fiction film. Uh, obviously, it's not uh, even necessary to mention that the scenes you are seeing in the film are not shot chronologically. So these are scenes during four years of shooting and they, they're they just made to seem chronologically, but none of it is it's chronological in the order. Uh, so now uh, I will stop sharing for a minute and you all can tell you more about the situation with the death of the mother and how difficult it was to be shot. Yes. Yeah, we were at the, at the editing process. <clears throat> we started with the editing. It was the fourth year. And uh, it was, uh, it was, it was clear that she will die sooner or later, sooner mm -hmm. because uh, her condition was, she was very old, very, very exhausted. And uh, one, uh, we were in contact with Atija. She was calling us almost every day that period. And one day she called and she said she is dying. It was Sunday. It was winter. We didn't have a terrain vehicle. And uh, me and Feko go to the to Dorfulia to the our uh, meeting point village, and from there by foot through the night several hours to the village. And when we came there, um, in the yard, there were 
four or five of the relative, her relatives already arrived around the fire. And uh, they were there for, I don't know, half hour, hour. During that time, uh, she was keeping uh, her mother in the same position when, when, where she, when she died. And she was waiting for us to catch that steam. And uh, uh, although we were we were sure, this is problematic situation. It is ethically, you, you, it is ethically very problematic from every aspect. Uh, but uh, we were we were we had a courage because uh, we, we saw that Atija wanted. To be uh, the scene to be filmed, she was keeping her in the same position. And uh, when we came there, the the relatives were hostile. What are you, they doing here with the camera? Hey, but uh, she grabs us on the hand, let us inside, and uh, we shot that the scene. So that's the moment which is um, ethically very problematic. I still have questions. Is it necessary or no? We should, we could show the death in a different way, but somehow we decided to do it like this. <laughs> myself uh, I think it was a way of immortalizing her mother right uh, her teacher maybe felt that way she wanted to keep one last image of her probably, probably. and probably this probably. film uh, is uh, the only uh, you know recorded uh, yes. you know relationship between her and her mother and it will stay there forever whenever she misses she will turn on and watch I don't know. Is is it uh, in Turkey? Is it uh, is it uh, a tradition? But um, we, I've seen lots of photos from the early twentieth century, from the deaths here uh, mm -hmm. in Orthodox uh, communities, so also in uh, Muslim communities, where uh, family is uh, gathered around the uh, corp and uh, to take a uh, last family photo. Yeah, so this is a tradition. She was okay with it. Mm -hmm. Probably. I mean, it's, it's not a custom here, but uh, maybe at the time, the photography was new and then... Uh, at the beginning of the was, 20th century, yes. Yeah, it was possibly, uh, you know, the only uh, time that the whole family came together and they were able to take a photo, maybe, so it maybe. meant something, you know. Uh, some things change and the meanings change and now we have the little phones and we can just shoot anything anytime uh, without thinking of ethics but I think um, the death of a mother uh, you know it's, it's so important especially to Hadija who shared obviously. almost all her life alone with her yeah obviously mm. very very interesting I would like to find one more thing to share, to see later about the translation, uh, what we managed to do. So after we, um, after we put the film on the timeline, mm -hmm. then we gave it to translator. Uh, the separate materials. Mm -hmm. the yes, the separate materials. So um, what we did, I just must show you. It's, it's interesting to see how much work it requires. In, in the following, I would like to add about uh, what I think for your audience will be interesting about the origins of all characters mm -hmm. who are shown in the film. Atija, uh, Sam's family, uh, Lutia's family, and uh, the buyer. Uh, Suffet. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. For it is closely connected with uh, with the Ottoman period and post Ottoman period. Mm -hmm. So, you, I hope the, you see the, this document probably. Yes, in 
in Cyrillic alphabet? Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. The, what matters is how we made this uh, translation of so much material. So basically, we had all the folders of uh, all the shootings uh, in different colors, mm -hmm. audio files, number of files. And then we made, this is like a map to, uh, mm -hmm. to make sure we realize, we understand, we remember the material. Uh, we have here in different color lines that are not understandable, need to be reshot. We have then uh, parts that must be erased or parts that must be added in the film. So in the entire transcript of the material, you can see we made, uh, we wrote it as, it's like a book when you read it. So here you have, for example, uh, 3436 Atije is looking at the bags to buy one. Uh, then she's going to, uh, to, an, to buy bananas. Uh -huh. so because we, we had to make this so we immediately know which file to look for to put in what place, what we need. When we need introduction, we will go to file 3436. When we need, uh, I don't know, Sam's family, we go to here, for example, uh, Muzo and Atije are climbing uh, on the hill. So we had divided all the material in a document about, about 100 pages. And then we just made the editing in the document itself. Just we're taking the different files and different shots, and then we are doing the same in the editing. That's just a short way of, of showing people that maybe there are uh, other documentarists among the audience who are dealing with the same problem and how to organize their material and how to approach it. Yeah, this is this is really a very meticulous way to work. I mean, the, considering uh, the difficulty of uh, you know uh, editing uh, all this material for you, I think you found but, the perfect uh, you, way. You yeah. have to keep everything uh, <laughs> organized. <because laughs> it's ten know. years of editing, if not. Yes, that's right. That's right. But still, I mean, when especially about a documentary. Editing is almost everything, you know. Yes. Uh, I mean, the, so the uh, approach to editing, uh, I think, uh, should be uh, very important, especially for the film students and uh, future filmmakers to be uh, who are listening to us, uh, because uh, the documentary editing can change everything. So there is always a tendency to believe that a documentary is, a, you know, the process when you take your camera, go somewhere, shoot something and, you know, put the scenes in, in, in an order. So <laughs> which definitely is not. <laughs> so, but I mean, there are so many, you know, kind of, uh, let's say, news, uh, you know, uh, short news documentaries uh, that, that people believe to be documentary cinema, which yeah, is sure, not, sure. of course. That's right. Uh, so um, maybe you can give some hints, you know, how to deal with, uh, you know, the, the material you have. Uh, and um, there was also one uh, question which I would like to, you know, uh, add it here. So uh, he asked the allegory that ended up making a profound statement on the nature of humankind by peeking into this microcosm was that an idea that naturally evolved on the journey or existed before you began? So I would like to add it uh, to this process, to all these uh, you know, ideas you had before starting and then which evolved during the shooting and uh, finally uh, found its, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say a matured version uh, after the editing. Uh, so how did you exactly adapt everything that pre-existed before the film to the final version? Well, we, we, we mentioned most of the things, but uh, we, we will start from, from the fact that what we've shown in the film mm -hmm. is a very simple story with very simple interactions between the protagonist. Uh -huh. So there is not uh, such a big deal. How do you provoke him to do something like this? The, uh -huh. Their actions are very simple, 
buying, taking, feeding, cutting, selling. That's mm -hmm. all. <laughs> Fighting. <laughs> That's all. So uh, when you're dealing with uh, such a basic human interactions, it is it is easy to uh, uh, words, as Tamar explained before, are just uh, 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 improvement of show of the story, which is visible even on the mute, understandable even on the mute. Mm -hmm. So, to I don't know to, to answer on the to, to give a tip uh, to be more honest and more um, in this kind of stories. As simple at the beginning, when, when you're putting the line, as simple as you can, mm -hmm. as you're talking to the, to the six, six years old child. Start from there and then see what, what, what you can put into to, to, to grow your story into a more mature uh, if, form. If we have more time, maybe we, we can play a short insert from our previous film, just to, to show yeah. what you was talking about, how to make a really uh, difficult subject uh, being understandable for a child in a documentary. So like, it's from Lake of Apples. Yes, and also right. we will share this link for all the audience. We will, mm -hmm. uh, we will send it in this chat. Програмата да не може да нещо за шо безборане. Meanwhile, there's another question. Okay. Sure. Um, shall I pose it? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, have you ever seen Simi Kaplanolu's movie, whose name is Honey? Uh, Bao? You know, Bao. Yes. Bao, yes. Uh, which won the Golden Bear. So, yes. If so, what do you think about that? Uh, it's a long time ago. It's four years ago, as I remember. <laughs> Actually, we watched this film while shooting Lake of Apples. So, it oh, was okay. five years ago. Five maybe years something ago. Like maybe that. Something uh -huh. like that. Uh, it's a really strong film. But I, I don't see a connection with Honeyland in any way. I mean, we did see it uh, at the time. I think that's when it came out or something Probably. like that. It was right after it won the Golden Bear in Berlin, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I mean, it's a really strong film, of course. Uh, and it, it was beautiful to see it. Uh, but uh, just it didn't influence us in the term of Honeyland because... Uh, it's a completely different approach. It's a documentary. Mm -hmm. it's maybe by, if you say by the realistic, uh, vis visually realistic uh, style, maybe it's mm -hmm. similar, but may maybe some, somebody saw something similar, but. No, no, they, they just wanted to know your opinion about it because there was also um, the, the notion of uh, collecting wild honey, you know, in the film. That's why I think. Yeah, well, um, actually, there is there is many films like that. If you see, there is Nepalese films also about uh, the psychedelic wild honey, oh, and yes. There, yeah. yes, and and we have seen many, but none Honeyland, of them. Honeyland is not about bees. Yeah, yeah, honey. exactly. We always say this that Honeyland is not a film about bees or honey, and none of us as directors uh, has this uh, background connected mm -hmm. bees or honey <laughs> uh, or interest in this but uh, for us it's interesting to say a story so every time we approach a subject it's even better if we don't know anything about a subject because then we can see through the audience eyes we can see what is not clear for us it won't be clear for somebody else too and uh, it makes us more curious more the process is just more interesting Mm -hmm. So it's for us uh, the bees is just um, nature. It's just uh, what nature. we found there. It could be anything. The sustainability question can be referred to anything. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, the disappearance of honey, uh, the uh, honeybees, 
uh, it was a big concern uh, in the recent there is years. Disappearances yeah, of there is disappearance so. of everything. So yeah. many species right. important. And disappearance of winter in our case. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So um, this is our last five, six minutes. Uh, so I think um, it's, it's not even enough uh, to, you know, discover a bit of this uh, incredible adventure uh, you had. Uh, so if there is anything you think our audience should never miss while you are here, uh, would you be kindly uh, telling us about it? We are not showing a link we, uh, from Apple yeah. 8, not to waste the, the time. We just mm -hmm. send the link to the group so anyone can see it. It's a 30 yeah, minute. I received it, for example. <laughs> Wonderful. You can share it to everyone. Uh -huh. Yes, the password. Uh, the password is there also. Maybe we can mention something about our next films a bit for the last five minutes or anything that somebody would be interested to ask. Yeah, the, the, the following project would be very interesting to hear because we are all looking forward to watching it. <laughs> well, for example, this summer, uh, we shot a short film about COVID-19. Uh, I directed it, Luvo is a DOP. We are both producers of the film. Again, it's a small crew. It was made during a very harsh quarantine time uh, where we choose just one family of uh, four people, a mother, father, and two children, uh, little twins. And uh, it's showing the reality of this one family during COVID and the paranoia happening. So it's it's kind of a comedy, but a dark comedy because again, it's it's not a comical situation, but well. <laughs> paranoia can, can become really funny if it exaggerates some point of. So what are your plans about uh, this film? Uh, well, the plans are to finish it by March probably and start sending it to festivals. Hopefully it will reach Turkey as well. Because I, I'm pretty sure that many people can connect with this. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure too. No, because uh, you had, uh, you know, a very, um, of course, it's a part of the success, but a fortunate beginning in Sundance Film Festival with Honeyland, which is uh, the, the the stronghold of independent cinema. Mm -hmm. And you had, a tr you won triple awards there, you know, <laughs> not one, not two, but three. And then it opened uh, the way to uh, very important uh, institutional awards of the film industry, not only Oscars, but Directors Guild and cinematographers and everything, which shows uh, the uh, strength of uh, the technical aspect of the film, especially in an industry uh, like America, which looks uh, you know, directly uh, to this uh, part of yeah, the film. The film uh, shot it on, on DSLRs. The one we are keeping in our backpacks. No expensive uh, equipment. Exactly. Exactly. So it's so, not, not about the, the equipment. It's never about it. No, no. It's, it's, it's about uh, the approach. It's, it's about, I mean, sure. I mean, like the technique which comes from, in fact, the Greek word, which means art. <laughs> People usually, you know, mix it up uh, what it means. And it looks like something like engineering, which is not, or mechanics, it's not. It's the techniques, which, which is the essence of uh, the making of art. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I hope uh, the new film, the new project, will reach such uh, wide audiences. And again, we will find a way uh, to meet you, uh, to talk to you, to watch your films, and welcome you in person in, in Turkey uh, once uh, COVID-19 goes away. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> So That's why uh, we didn't come to Turkey this time for this masterclass, but I'm pretty sure there will be chances in the future. Yes. So any uh, last words for our audiences before I make an, a small announcement? Well, feel free to reach us. Uh, we're talking about uh, the profession, the young professionals there to ask any questions, to share your project maybe or Yes. to ask questions or anything just feel free 
and we we really want to give courage to uh, to filmmakers at these difficult times not to stop with their work. Actually, it's important to understand that every time on the planet is a good time for documentary filmmaking. The bad times are maybe even the best <laughs> for documentary filmmaking, sure. unfortunately, but true. Because yeah. our message and task is to witness the hard times of this planet. So have the courage to do this. Take your camera in your hand. Don't support, don't, uh, how to say, don't uh, lean too much on institutions. Uh, if you have a good thing in your hands, institutions will find you. <laughs> There are lots of films, even on Sundance or on Oscars, that are films on iPhone. So it's not about the money in documentary. Thank you so much. I mean, cordially, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you are really uh, a great inspiration to everyone. Uh, so thank you. Goodbye until we see you again. Thank you very much. So we should just on Landerken. Bir hatırlatma yapmak isterim. 13 finalist filmin canlı gösterimini 15.15'te Sabancı Vakfı YouTube kanalından izleyebilirsiniz. Şimdiden herkese iyi seyirler dilerim. Ee, yarın saat 20'de yine bu kanalda canlı yayınlanacak olan ödül töreninde görüşmek üzere. Hoşçakalın. <gülüyor>